what is up everyone and welcome back to the channel welcome to another video where we get to take a look at the daytona cargo 125 now if you're expecting a stylish scooter to ride around the city you might just well click off and watch another video but if you're looking for a workhorse for deliveries and for basically a van of scooters you might want to stick around we're gonna take a look at this thing from front wheel to back wheel and then we're gonna take it out for a ride and see how it rides let's get straight into it all right so starting from the front we have our headlight halogen headlight because these are cheaper to uh, change out when the bulb goes out uh, right here on, on the top of the handlebars swiveling with the handlebars down below we have our halogen daytime running lights and we have our turn signal indicators this scooter is completely halogen no leds on this thing uh, moving on down we have a normal fork with a 10 inch front wheel and brakes it's a triple piston caliper covering a 170 millimeter brake disc the brake disc is small making the brake disc cheap but then again they put really big brake pads i mean properly huge brake pads on it so you get the stopping power for uh, less money than a conventional big disc moving around to the side the first thing we notice is the wheelbase of the machine and that is uh, with purpose because over here we have one of the biggest loading floors you will find on the market it's set, it's about 40 centimeters long from here to here it's 40 centimeters you have a luggage hook here and a luggage hook here and a usb plug right here uh, it does come with uh, passenger foot pegs but they are in such a position that if you have something here that occupies the entire floor the rider can rest his feet on the passenger pegs and then if he, has, if he also has a passenger the passenger can use this part to rest his feet so these are more rider foot pegs than passenger foot pegs the seat is 70, 760 millimeters tall which is pretty low uh, we have a back seat for the right for the passenger but watch this if that loading floor is not big enough and you have i don't know a second big box to carry what you do just pull it up and now you have a backrest and a second loading area this is rated for 30 kilograms with three metal rails two on the side one in the back so you can tie down whatever it is you are mounting back here so between this space and this space this machine has a lot of uh, storage space to mount boxes to mount whatever it is you want to mount on it it's adaptable to your needs because again this is a workhorse moving around to the back area we have dual shock absorbers on the back again a 10 inch wheel on the back and drum brakes the engine is a 125cc affair but it's detuned for reliability uh, and longevity this thing puts out just eight horsepower and eight newton meters of torque but it should outlive cockroaches it's an air-cooled unit so you don't have to worry about antifreeze it's a very simple unit it's the regular it's related to the gy6 engine again a very simple affair on the back in terms of lights we have our rear brake light and our indicators and just about it moving on to the dash we have our engine start button here this would have been uh, to turn on the headlights but here in europe the low beam is permanently on we have our ignition switch here with an ignition lock we have our fuel filler cap right here with a key we have a bit of a storage space right here for i don't know something like a water bottle we have our we have our fuel indicator we have our speed we have our battery charging indicator the voltmeter 
Uh, in terms of video lights, we have our check engine light, we have our turn signal indicators, our low, our high beam indicator, and also an oil pressure light. This is again very important for the person who works with this machine. Moving around to the left side, we have our horn. We have our turn signal indicators and our high and low beam. Pretty standard affair, but the voltmeter and the oil pressure light is something that you don't see on many scooters. Under the seat, you are not going to fit a helmet in here because the seat is actually quite shallow, but that's to make the seat height lower. It is a bit of a storage space where you can store a couple of necessities like some water, some oil, some rags, uh, some rain gear, but uh, you're not going to fit a helmet. But then again, you're probably not going to be parking it up and uh, leaving it for a couple of hours while you do some other stuff. This is what you use for work. So, who is this machine made for? Well, it's not made for your regular rider, okay? All the things on it, they're not made for regular riders. This is made for somebody who works in deliveries and who uses a scooter to do his job. Everything on it is to help the person doing deliveries, including the backrest, including the low seat height, all of the storage space to mount boxes to. And uh, in terms of comfort, well, this backrest is absolutely amazing. The side foot pegs, if you have a big box here, you can very comfortably sit your legs right here. And uh, somehow the handlebar is not a big of a reach. It is a little bit extended towards the front because of the long wheelbase. But, you know, it's not that uncomfortable. But yeah, let's take it out on the road and see how this thing rides because I'm curious how a, a scooter made for work rides. Let's go. Come on. All right. Riding the Daytona Cargo 125. This finally get to ride the machine that's not intended to be stylish, not intended to sell to the fashion conscious customer. This thing is actually intended to be sold to fleets and fleet operators and uh, for something to succeed in that this kind of market in uh, the fleet operator and the business to business market uh, it does have to have a couple of things first of all it has to be cheap to run and it has to be cheap to buy first off the bat in terms of cheap cheapness to buy uh, this thing here costs about uh, two and a half thousand euros, which is a very good price for a 125 cc scooter uh, In some markets it might be actually quite a little bit cheaper, but uh, here it's two and a half thousand euros uh, And in terms of cheapness to maintain well, I've looked at the price uh, at the prices for parts for spare parts from fairings to engine parts and they are dirt cheap so it ticks all the boxes cheap to buy cheap to run but is it any good well from a rider's perspective and as a fleet operator you kind of want a machine that's easy to ride for your riders so uh, they don't crash a lot so you don't have to repair them so you don't have repair costs but first thing i'm noticing it has an interesting way of going over bumps because of the long wheelbase this long wheelbase feels feels different than any other scooter but in a good way we're currently doing 75 kilometers an hour on 10 inch wheels and this thing is dead stable it doesn't dart around the road this thing is dead stable and when it comes to bumps although it doesn't have any spectacular suspension again because of the long wheelbase it has one of this, I don't know, rickety rolling effects where the front wheel takes the bump and then the suspension has time to settle down and then the rear wheel takes the bump and again it has time to settle down. It, you're kind of on like on a boat somehow. Like here on this bridge we have these bit of bumps and it's comfortable but it feels soft in a way but it's comfortable. And also even though it feels soft you still have stability in the corners we're pushing to 
the red line of the speedometer at 80 kilometers an hour but the thing is that stable that easy to ride it's impressive what a long wheelbase can do for you green light yes let's punch it now we're gonna get into a bit of a tra a bit of a traffic jam because I know the traffic light up front is broken and what happens when you have a broken traffic light you get congestion let's see how quickly we can navigate hold your line this is again very important for the person working with this machine because they want to get past quickly and uh, we're gonna hang a right here so come on come on on up the inside and let's go beautiful maneuverability very easy to flick from left to right in terms of weight this machine is about 116 kilograms wet and ready to ride the 10 inch wheels at low speeds gives it excellent maneuverability it does have a lot of even though it has uh, a long wheelbase the turning lock is pretty severe and uh, you can turn this thing around on a dime and red light nothing behind us hard on the brakes yep we got stopping power even though the brake this is quite small and the rear is just a drum because of the front brake pads that are extremely large uh, you get a lot of braking force with not much effort from the lever uh, it doesn't have too much feel in the lever as to what the front brake disc and pads are doing but it stops you it gets you stopped pretty quickly and now for the traffic light Grand Prix what do we have behind us we have a V-Strom 650 probably yeah that's a 650 now you might think with 8 horsepower this thing is terribly underpowered and it does feel a little bit underpowered but honestly it's not that bad it has enough power and torque for the city for traffic it has enough power and torque to get out of its own way so i see nothing wrong with a detuned engine would have would have i liked a little bit more power yeah sure but who doesn't like a little bit more power but for what this thing is intended eight horsepower is plenty enough and uh, you actually feel the torque the thing is geared in a way and it produces torque at pretty low rpm so you never hear the engine stressing at high rpm again this is made for longevity this thing is supposed to outlast cockroaches and this thing is supposed to be used and abused by somebody who doesn't actually own the machine like i've said uh even in our showroom in romania here we sell fleets of this of these we don't sell these to individuals not because we don't want to but because individuals are not interested in a scooter like this this is bought by fleet operators and then given to couriers to use them so the person riding it doesn't own it so they're not going to be too careful about it they're probably not going to check the oil that's why you have an oil pressure light so when the engine oil is running low uh, and oil pressure drops the the light will start illuminating indicating that there's low oil pressure which should make the person conscious and add a little bit of oil i say should because sometimes they ride with the light on not giving a crap but yeah you know what let's test it on a really bumpy road because something like this you get to ride for 10 hours 8 hours a day and uh, you might end up on roads like this yeah the suspension is bumpy it's not the most comfortable ride but again I am on 10 inch wheels okay 10 inch wheels and somehow it's managing it let's go this way <laughs> crossing the train tracks let's go let's go let's go let's go whoop, whoop, whoop. you can almost call this off-roading it is soaking the bumps 
I do feel quite a bit of bumps in my spine I'm not gonna lie but again at this price point what do you expect the fact that it can do it is kind of amazing we're doing 30 kilometers an hour on Belgian pave oh boy and now we get to test out the turning radius like I said the handlebar turns a lot and this thing turns on a dime and again with the long wheelbase the stability of it it's stupendous just look at it two kilometers an hour full lock and i am able to balance it speed up i am just able to properly balance it and then whoop we go back onto the cobblestone there we go you know for what it's worth the thing is shaking but it's not rattling the plastics are actually quite pretty good put together to not be rattling on a road like this <laughs> oh, good thing nobody's here to see me doing this they're gonna see it once I post it but ah, who cares it's better to ask for forgiveness than to ask for permission right anyway let's get back on tarmac and end this little review of the Daytona Cargo 125 an impressive little machine no bells and whistles no thrills but really good at getting you from A to B and carrying a lot of stuff from A to B and if you're interested in buying something like this for uh, buy or buying a fleet of these for your couriers or for your company or for your business they are quite sturdy they are reliable uh, you can beat on them a lot and they will take it or actually your employees can beat on them a lot and they will take it cheap to run cheap to buy cheap to own why not why not it's a wonderful little machine made for working but anyway that has been it for this review guys thank you so much for coming along on this ride and until next time take care out there everyone and ride safe bye